Hello YouTube, it is I, Banded Wendy, in my 12 Days of Christmas series. Today is day 11, the 11th day of Christmas, uh, the 15th of December 2010. Um, I did these last year uh, as a, a support mechanism to get me through to a really big goal that I had set for myself uh, by December 31st. It, it was great. It, uh, it's a great way for accountability and it's just a great way to share with everyone during the holiday season and keep you on track. So I'm so awesome to see that Jeremy's doing 12 days and Melanie Sky Moon's doing 12 days. Um, and I think losing it with Rebecca, Becca is going to be doing it too. So join us. Come on out. If you've got some goals you're still, still trying to hit for the end of the year, this is a great way to do it. So uh, I'm going to go fast because I went through these 11 frequently asked questions and had to do, I'm doing it again because I ran over time. Uh, do I have excess skin and, and will I have excess skin? Um, everybody's different, you know. I don't know if you're going to have excess skin. But depending on how much weight you had to lose, how old you are, if you've had children or not, how fast you lose your weight, what type of exercise you do, it's all going to affect the fact if you have ex excess skin. I don't necessarily have excess skin. I have skin that has shrinkled up, right? I have like shrinklies. Um, I've pretty much shown you guys through my videos what my skin looks like. So you can go back and watch my videos to see my skin. It also has to do with if, if you're happy with it. I'm happy with my body. I'm happy with where I'm at. Sure, there could be something that could be nipped or tucked to make it better, but that's not where I am in my life currently. Number two, how do you ha handle the mental game? You know, I talk about the mental game all the time, and the best advice I can give you is that you wake up each day with a renewed spirit and a renewed energy and a passion and a commitment and drive for yourself and your journey. Um, and I follow the weight loss surgery rules. And the more I follow those rules, the better I get at them. And by following them and getting good at them, I, lo I lost weight. I can maintain my weight. And that in itself is a huge power tool for the mental game. I also talk out loud to myself. I uh, share my thoughts and my struggles with you guys here on YouTube, with my family, with my personal close friends. Um, so you got to just talk it out and stay strong and just not give up, you know. Um, number three, what advice would you give to immediate post-op? Listen to your body. Take the time to heal and recover and realize that you have a new stoma and that you are on a course to change your life. So this is about creating new habits and not following old habits. Not easy, right? One of the biggest struggles for me was not drinking before I eat, during eating, and after eating. And I can tell you I talked to a lot of successful lap banders and weight loss surgery people who cannot follow that rule. It's a hard one. But look at the rules, follow the rules, listen to your surgeon, and do not go off track. Take your time to recover. If you have the Allergan band, go to lapband.com. It's free. And post your uh, weight, your start weight, take photos, beginning, you know, front side, front and side shots every week. Um, have a journal with your start weight and uh, your for me, my weekly weigh-in is the same day as my surgery, which is a Monday, and fill it, you know, fill the notebook with all the weeks ahead of you. Oh, I want to mention, people were concerned about the beeping and that I need to change the battery in our fire alarm. It's not a fire alarm. I'm safe. Don't worry. I'm sorry for the beeping, but I have a crazy busy life, and I want to get these videos in, so I'm doing them in my office. And we're downtown Loft, at Loft in downtown LA, and that's our security beeping, so I apologize for the beep. Don't worry. I'm okay. Um, so immediate post-op, follow the rules, stay strong, know that each day as you move forward you're going to progress and feeling better. Walk, 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 walk. Do not try to eat something. If you're in phase one, don't try to go to phase three because that's an old habit, right? Giving in. Face that mental battle and ask yourself, why do I want to go to the refrigerator right now and eat an olive when I'm only supposed to be drinking liquids? Stop, drop, and roll. And don't eat the olive, have the liquid. Um, number four, what do you use to count calories? CalorieKing.com. CalorieKing.com. Simple. Um, and I count calories and I count protein only. I don't worry about sugar. I don't worry about fat. I don't worry about carbs, calories, and protein only. That's what my surgeon told me, and that's what I do. Um, if you can't find what you're looking for on CalorieKing.com, go to Google, type in nutritional information for buffalo shrimp. 
Guaranteed you're going to find it. Number five, what speed do you run on the treadmill? I started out jogging at like 3.5 or 4. You know, now I run anywhere from 5.8 up to 7.8. I really, my number one thing on the treadmill is don't worry about what I'm, I'm doing. Worry about what you're doing because as you condition your body and you get better and better with each workout, your speed's going to increase, right? The number one thing I can say is I push myself every time I step on that treadmill to do even just at one second better than I did the last time, right? That's always my goal. So if that means I need to increase my speed that last half mile to get there, that's what I'm going to do. So when I'm running at 7.8, I'm running, I'm breathing, I'm sweating. For me, it's all about the sweat, right? I know that if I'm sweating, I push myself past where I was before or I've pushed myself to get as much bang for my buck out of that 30 minutes of exercise. I don't know, I always get 30 in, sometimes I do more, but life sometimes only gives you 30 minutes to get your exercise in. So sweat and go as fast as you can and still feel comfortable. Um, number six, how do I not eat so much and pick the right foods? A lot of practice, a lot of self-love, a lot of self-talk. Um, I googled recipes and foods that were high in protein, low in calorie. I fill my life with those. I use my one cup containers. That's really what gets me through. I always pick protein first. That's a rule. Um, and, uh, you know, we're, we don't always make the right or the best choice. But the thing with the, the difference between having weight loss surgery and not is before weight loss surgery, I would say, oh, I'll wait till January 2nd to make the next best choice. With weight loss surgery, we have this amazing tool uh, that has a mind of its own on some occasions. And some days I eat more than other days, right? Some days I eat less than other days. But each time I have a choice with the next meal and I can easily get back on track. I can come to YouTube, I can make a video, someone can give me support. Um, so it's, it, you know, that's what it is for me. That's how I do it. Number seven, when did I start to work out? I started walking the very first day of post-op. I eventually started walking the dog um, around the neighborhood. Um, on week 15 of my journey, I realized that I wasn't losing weight as fast as I was prior, or I wasn't losing as much, and I was evaluating myself against the weight loss surgery rules, and I was not exercising 210 minutes a week, 30, day, 30 minutes times 7 days a week. So that's when I found the Couch to 5K program, and my life has been changed as much with the Couch to 5K as weight loss surgery. Um, I run every day and I for sure get my 210 minutes of exercise in. So week 15 for me, but it all started because I wasn't losing weight and I was evaluating myself against the rules. Um, number eight was going back to work hard. I went back to work about two weeks after my surgery. It was not hard. I had told everyone I worked with what was going on. They were very sensitive and aware to me and my needs. Um, and I had my meals planned so I know what to eat. I had stuff ready to go. I didn't have to struggle with that. Um, sitting up straight at a desk or a computer or riding long distance in my car, sitting up straight was a little uncomfortable, um, but no, it was not hard. I have a desk job. I didn't have to do any physical labor. Number nine, are you or were you hard on yourself? Huh. Well, anybody who knows me is probably going to say she's one hard-ass bitch um, and, and on herself. Yeah, um, I am. You know, I may come across sometimes as, as blunt or aggressive or... Uh, rude even. Well, guess what? That's me talking to myself most of the time. Been there, done that. I am a cash pay. I take this very seriously. Uh, and this is my last chance. So it's about me changing my life. And guess what? It's not easy to change your freaking life. And if I can't be hard on myself, who's going to be? Right? Nobody else cares. It's nobody else's body. They don't have to live with the weight. They don't have to live with the rules. They don't have to do any of it. Just me. So yeah, I'm hard on myself. And it's, it's working. <laughs> um, number 10, will I ever start to feel like a thin person or will I always feel fat? I sure hope you start to feel like a thin person. Um, this is me, you know, I feel thin. I don't know if anybody else thinks I'm thin, but I know I feel thin. And it took a lot of work. Getting to my goal weight helped a lot. Following the rules. Every time I follow the rules, I know I'm making the right choices. It was a big struggle for me on my journey was to learn to like and love what I see. And I've accomplished that this year. Take pictures, make videos, um, try on new sizes. Uh, don't be afraid to wear the next down smaller size and let it feel good on you. Um, 
if you're still struggling with it and you're at your goal weight or you're close to your goal weight, maybe to see a therapist. Um, there's a lot of mental pain from past in our life that's hard to get over. Everybody's different, but yes, I hope and I believe that eventually you will be able to feel thin and not feel fat. Um, I, you know, a lot of people talk about it, uh, body dysmorphia. If you're having that struggle, I'm sorry, and uh, I can only advise that you get some professional help and support from your family and friends. But I think you can feel thin, and you won't always feel fat. But I'm not you, you know. Last but not least, number 11. On day 11 of the Christmas run, let's see. Do you plan on getting or being pregnant and being a mom? Yes, I do. Um, when? I don't know. Uh, I want to stay at my goal weight forever, um, but I for sure don't want to even think about having children until I've been at my goal weight for 52 weeks. I'm at my goal weight now, 21 weeks. Um, I'm 36 years old, and I really would like to have any children I'm going to have by the time I'm 40. Um, I'm, you know, healthy BMI for my height, a healthy weight is 176 pounds, I believe. I'm 143 today, um, so I'm 30 some odd pounds below a healthy BMI, you know, within a healthy BMI. Uh, so I can gain 35 pounds through pregnancy and still be pretty much a healthy BMI, which that for me works, you know. Um, and I know I have the tool and I have the lap band and I have supportive YouTube and I have friends. Um, that uh, if I do gain weight, it'll come off. You know, I'm, I'm not scared about that. Um, and I'll be that girl running uh, a half marathon pregnant. That's right, that'll be me running a 5K race pregnant. Um, you know, I, I want, and yeah, one day I'll be, ba I'll be what, a banded mama Wendy, something like that. So I don't know when, um, but you'll all know because I'll be making videos when it does happen. But we're in no rush. Um, my husband's young. Uh, I'm a cougar, I guess, in that realm. I think they call me a puma, actually. <laughs> anyway, uh, no babies for Wendy at this point, but one day. So, hope you're all, all having a great day, and uh, enjoy the holiday season, and we'll see you tomorrow for day 10 of the 12 Days of Christmas. Take care. Bye.